Welcome to Miss Smith's Math Tutorials. I'm Miss Smith. In this video, we're talking about factoring trinomials. Specifically, we're going to use the divide and slide method. Now, I've heard different names for this method. I've heard it called the um, drop it low method, the bottoms up method, divide and slide. What It's got a lot of different names. I'm sure there are many more out there that I haven't heard, but it's definitely the easiest and quickest way to factor that I have seen. So it's my new favorite way. I've got a number of other videos on how to factor trinomials using other methods, including the Xbox method, just using the traditional X and then the factor by grouping method. This is definitely the shortest. So we have three examples we're going to walk through together. This divide and slide method is still going to utilize the X that we create, as does every method that I teach. I just think it's a really great way to set up what's happening. So our first step is going to be to label our A, B, and C. Now once you get pretty good at this, you don't need to physically label A, B, and C. You can just kind of do it in your head. But since we're learning, A in this case is going to be your first coefficient. So right here, you might be thinking like there's nothing there. Well, there's an understood one in for A. So we label A as one. Your B value is your next coefficient next to just the plain X. So this would be a three. And your C value is your constant. So in this case, it's a negative 28. So now we're going to build our x. And the way that x works is a times c goes in top of the x, and b goes in the bottom of the x. So a is 1, and c is negative 28. So 1 times negative 28 is negative 28. And our b value is 3. So we're trying to figure out two numbers here, two numbers that multiply to give me negative 28 and they add to give me three. So there's only going to be two numbers that will work here. And sometimes you'll find a situation where you can't find anything that works. And in that case, we would say it's not factorable. We'll have to go about using a different method. And I've got tons of videos on different methods to use. But here, these are all going to be factorable. So a number that multiplies to give me negative 28, but adds to give me 3. Well, let's just think about our signs first. How could I multiply and get a negative number? The only way to do it is to multiply a negative and a positive. That's the only way, right, to multiply and get a negative. Now let's just think of things that go into 28. Let's pretend that you just weren't sure. You can always bring out your graphing calculator and you want to go to your y equals. And once you're at your y equals, you could type in the factor you're trying to think of. So 28 divided by x. Now some of you might be thinking, wait, 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 it was negative 28. It doesn't actually matter. Whether you put in negative 28 or positive 28, it doesn't change the actual numbers that we're going to see. So I just always put in the positive. That's just my preference. You can definitely put in negative 28 if you want. OK, so let's hit second graph. This is going to pull us to our table. And here we're going to see everything that goes into 28. So 1 and 28, 2 and 14, and 4 and 7, which happen to be the factors that we need. So that's a little trick to help you. Now one has to be negative, one has to be positive, right? You might want to just try both to see which one works. This is going to end up being a negative 4 plus 7 gives me a positive 3. Okay, so now that we found our two factors, that's the hardest part, and the rest of this is super easy. All we have to do is write two parentheses and we're going to put um, the variable that we're using, so in this case x and x, and now you just put your two new factors. So we got a minus 4, so x minus 4, and we got a plus 7, so x plus 7, and you're done. Okay, so those are the factors of x squared plus 3x minus 28, x minus 4, and x plus 7 are your factors. So let's look at another example. Now notice this one is a little different because we don't have a 1 in the place of a. We have a 3 and that's going to make a big difference when we get to our final step. Let's go ahead and just note on the side a is 3, 
B is negative 7, and C is 2. So we're still going to build our x the same way. Our a times c goes up top. Our b goes on the bottom. a times c is 6. 3 times 2 is 6. And b is negative 7. Now I know my signs. Let's think about this. I'm multiplying and getting a positive, but I'm adding and getting a negative. Well, the only way that can work is to have a negative and a negative. Those multiply to give me a positive, but they add to give me a negative. So let's think of what goes into six. There's really only six and one and two and three. And only one of those would add and give me a negative seven. So if I had negative one minus six, that would give me a negative seven. So let me build my almost answer and you'll see why it's our almost answer. Uh, our variable's x, so I put one there, one there, and now I just fill in the factors. So minus one and minus six. Now I'm almost done, but I have to remember that this first a value was not a one. So when it's a one, you're done right? But when it's anything other than one, we have one more step to do. And it's where that divide and slide or the bottoms up name comes in. So we take the second term of each of these binomials and we divide by that number on both of them. If we can divide and get a whole number, then we'll write the whole number. But if we cannot divide and get a whole number, we're gonna do the slide method. So let me show you what I mean. This is an x minus one third. So one third, I can't divide and get a whole number. What we do is we take that three and we slide it. So because we can't divide, we need to slide. So we end up with a three x, notice I just put the three in front of the x, and then I leave the minus one as it was. Now when we get to the next binomial, so now I've still got my x, but notice here I've got a negative six divided by three. Well, that definitely reduces to a whole number. So we would rewrite that as negative two, right? Isn't negative six divided by three negative two? So there's no need to slide, right? We were able to divide. So you either divide or you slide, it's one of the two. And then this would be your final answer. Pretty easy, right? Let's do one more together. Let's label our A, our B, and our C. So our A is gonna be two, notice A is not one, which means we're gonna have to do this little circle and divide. Our B is gonna be a positive seven, and our C is a negative four. Let's go ahead and build our X. So our a times c and our b in the bottom. Now a times c, two times negative four is a negative eight. And our b is seven. So if I'm multiplying and getting a negative number, that means my sign has to be a negative and a positive. That's the only way to multiply and get a negative. Now in terms of my actual factors, the things that go into eight are one and eight and two and four. Only one of those is gonna work to give me seven. It's gonna end up being a negative one plus eight. That would give me a positive seven. So let's write our almost answer, right? X minus one and X plus eight. Now we're not done because we've got this two here that we need to divide by, our divide and slide. So we wanna divide both of those new factors by two. Now if we can reduce and get a whole number, great. If we can't, we've got a slide. So negative one half, well that's gonna reduce and give me a decimal. So that means two, you gotta slide. So we end up with two X minus one right here. Now eight divided by two, that's gonna give me a whole number. Eight divided by two is four. So we go ahead and divide that one. Eight divided by two is a positive four. So there are our factors. Okay, here's one for you guys to try. 
I will post the answer in the video description below. This has been Miss Smith's Math Tutorials.